The COVID year is helping a lot of teams. Okay. The transfer portal helped a lot of teams. And as a result, in the men's game, heck of a lot of parity, which means low ratings, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with us today is our cavalcade of stars as we prepare you fans for the final four, starting with my favorite teacher, Michael King. Mr. King, how are you today, sir? Doing well. All right. And Captain for Life, Will Cotton, with a fresh set of headphones. Oh, how yeah. are you, sir? Trying to make a, a, a trying to make an impact now. <laughs> <laughs> and fans, the person you will probably yell at the most today on the show, our official uh, and uh, administrator of the Odd Coaches Podcast, Robert Abney. Robert, how are you, sir? I, as always, sir, I am. I'm living the dream. Good weekend <laughs> of basketball. Uh, Went and played at a, at a lake nearby with my daughter and some with my daughter with my wife and some friends. We we had a good time. It was a great weekend. Man, I love it, man. So let's let's just get into it. So fans, uh, we're going to prepare you for the final four, and we're going to discuss a number of different topics, uh, such as recruiting, the transfer portal, NIL, conference realignment, team breakdowns, as well as championship predictions in segment three. Before we talk about the uh, team still playing, uh, just a reminder, fans, this is Coach Adams again. Winning teams in the postseason have a lot in common. Distraction-free. They're just worried about playing. They're not worried about anything else. Multiple defenses, especially guarding without help. (laughs) Okay? Offensive flexibility. If whatever you're used to doing is not working, you have the ability to do something else. And then when secondary players become primary, in other words, shot makers versus shot takers. Okay. So before we talk about those games, some men's reflections of this year, we covered basketball all year. And here's some things that I'd like my panel to kind of talk about in their own way. The COVID year is helping a lot of teams. Okay. The transfer portal helped a lot of teams, and as a result in the men's game, heck of a lot of parity, which means low ratings, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Mike, talk to me a little bit about how did you see this season go, man? Uh, any direction you want to take? Well, there didn't seem to be any really, really great dominant teams, which we said the first uh bracket uh podcast and uh when that happens you get four teams where you go huh i didn't think that was gonna i didn't think any of them were gonna be there which is why none of us picked any of them (laughs) um so that's i think that's part of it the other part is based on the teams that are here you see that nil matters but it also doesn't because some of the teams here (laughs) didn't help them at all uh, the transport all didn't help them at all. Probably, if anything, it could only hurt. Then you have like Miami paying people more than than most. So you get you you kind of get parity there too. Because do you need it or not? We have we have both examples. It's a very strange tournament. All right, Will. What do you think, man? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, like you said, Coach. I mean. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not interested. I think there has to be a good balance between mid-majors and blue bloods. Um, you know, and because even if you think about it, how like think about the brackets. I mean, once it started getting out of, out, of, out of crap, I was like, man, I don't care about it no more. Like even the casual fan who plays on the brackets was probably like, oh, every I mean, I mean, unless you're just like picking whoever you're like, oh, yeah. But it just wasn't really like an exciting exciting tournament though like if you if you love basketball if you love the actual the nitty-gritty like it's exciting but like you know the casual fans and unfortunately the ads and the you know the business you know unfortunately it doesn't work for them but i i thought it was pretty exciting it was pretty good all right robert uh, as our resident official 
you've watched the, the year. We've had a lot of uh, public and private conversations. Any thoughts as uh, we begin to wrap up the season? Well, I mean, I, first of all, I, I agree with a lot of the stuff that Mike and, and, and Will said. I mean, there was no great team this year. And, and FAU. I mean, well, and, and, but I mean, and that's, that's not who, you know, that's not who jumps out at you. I mean, I, I'm with, I'm with Will. I think it's, I think that, uh, you know, ad, there's more ad money and there's going to be more interest when you have those blue blood programs in there. I mean, the closest one you have right now is, is UConn, which is kind of is, but kind of isn't really, you know, um, you know, that being said, uh, I think Will's crazy for not watching because I, <laughs> it, it's gonna, I mean, it's going to be two good games. Um, Miami and UConn are both playing as well as anybody right now. Uh, Miami is highly entertaining to watch. They are a fun I'm team. Gonna to watch. I'm going to catch it. I'm going to catch it. Well, hopefully Will is at my house eating my food. Yeah, yeah exactly. My exactly. And, and you know, the game. And San, San Diego State, FAU, I mean, how, how cool for both of those players. One of them teams, Robert, is going to be in the One national championship game at 9 p.m. on a Monday night playing one shining moment. Ain't nobody. All right. We're going to talk about FAU Let with a legitimate chance to win. You're, you're leaving out that part with a legitimate, well, legitimate, yeah. 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 legitimate, yeah. legitimate yeah. chance to win. 100%. There is um, any of these four teams. I mean, I think UConn's probably the favorite, but any of these four teams can win two games. Well, the matter, is, oh, yeah, is the matter yeah. going to be too heavy for their gym? Like, will their ceilings in the gym be able to handle the matters? I'm not such, I can't I'm imagine too, they're playing in front of that many people. You're being mean now, but I did see pictures of their gym. All <laughs> right, so let's go to the men's breakdown. Let's talk about FA, okay? And I, I brought up the transfer portal. I brought up all of these things to, to have that conversation. So eight of FAU's nine players in their rotation have spent Years together at the school. Um, they're old. And when you're old, you win in the postseason. The Owls only play guys with at least two years of experience, and most have four or five. Got to thank the COVID year. Gentlemen, they're 35 and three. That's like the Kentucky, the Gonzaga, the Duke 30 some win team that you're used to seeing. You just didn't think it was going to be from Boca Raton, Florida, the Beach Boys. Okay? Right. Um, so as we said all year, they kept coming up on the show for you who, who pay attention fans, because after the first month of the season, I always talk about teams that are winning eight, nine, ten in a row. And for like a five week stretch, FAU, FAU, FAU. So this team can legitimately win the national championship. Bless their heart. They have a balanced recruiting roster, which means they've got a little bit of everything. Mike, you've had a chance to peek at them now. What do you think about FAU? I mean, I'm looking at their schedule right now. They beat a bunch of teams you never heard of. And then they, yeah, they, played, they played Ole Miss, who was terrible this year, and they lost. <laughs> but they're on this run, so good – I mean, good for them. I'm just uh, – they're the ones I'm rooting for just because it's just so so rare that something like this could happen. But, yeah, and he, they played one terrible big conference team and, and lost. 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 And lost. here they are. It's, it's, it's kind of great. I, I wish Bo Bian was on with this because that's something we would have talked about in the department meeting. How can we totally screw this up for America? You know, let's put Florida Atlantic in it. <laughs> I mean, you just whoever got into Purdue's bracket. We did say if you got into Purdue's bracket, you had a chance, and that's 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 the magic recipe. Is they just happened to get into Purdue's bracket. They didn't have to play a, a real team in round two, and they started to believe. Why not? All right. Speaking of that, Will, you're absolutely right. Everybody likes the first day upset, but when you get to the Sweet Sixteen, you're like, okay, I kind of want to know what I'm eating here. So you're going to have a Princeton go through. They, okay. But when you get these other ones, you're like, uh, I hope you lose so I can get back to this. Tell me what you're thinking about FAU. You finally saw them. What do you think? Man, I think, you know, they were very impressive. 
you know, the, um, but the funniest thing, especially about all the transfer portal thing, one of the older coaches, I think it was, um, uh, the, uh, I always forget his name, Michigan State's, uh, Izzo, I always Tom said Izzo. Izzo, yeah, Tom Izzo, he came out and he was like, oh, I don't believe in the, in the transfer portal and I'm not in it. And I'm like, yo, with NIL now, especially now with the internet, you can get exposure. I don't have to go to Duke. I don't have to go to, you know, Michigan state. I can play wherever because the internet going to catch fire and I'll go and everybody's going to see me, you know? So uh, great for them, man. Changing, changing the whole kind of idea of how to try to, um, you know, bring in players, taking guys, you know, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's going to be, it's going to appeal of a lot of guys and women, as they go through forward in NCAA and say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm, I could be at Texas, but I go be over here. And so, so from UConn, I can over here. And now we got a little squad and, you know, all these guys talk. So yes, it's great. Yes, they do. Yes, it's great. Do. So it's great. I love it. So, Robert, uh, unlike Mike, you've seen most of these things that you have played. Uh, you are an official. Uh, you're a basketball aficionado. So what do you think about FAU? I, that's a, that's a good team. I mean, it, it doesn't matter who they've played that that's a good team. They have balance. They have size. They have guards who can handle the ball. They have guys who can score. They run eight or nine guys in and out. So they're, you know, they're not depending on, on a, on a short bench. That's a really good team. And it, it would, it wouldn't shock me at all if they win it. No. It, would shock, it also would not shock me at all if San Diego State beats them by 30. So, uh, And that's a good segue, sir, because we're going to call, we're going to talk about San Diego State. Uh, Mike and I usually talk about San Diego State football because as fans who listen to the show know, the Pac-12 is slow, dated, methodical, and that's why they may be out of business in like three to five years. But San Diego State is a team that has literally for the last decade or two begged the Pac-12 to take them in, and now they have up, passed, and exceeded the Pac-12. So maybe the Pac-12 is not the best conference for them anymore, and somebody else will call them. They've got a new football stadium. they got a basketball arena that sells out. They have the beach. They have everything, and they're in a position to win a national championship but Robert, do you call a foul? <laughs> Did they steal one today, Robert? Tell me what you would do. I know okay, what you're going to say. Wait, wait, time out, time out. Are we talking <laughs> about San Diego State, or are we talking about the game today? We're talking about the game today. Okay. And did they steal one? But San Diego State, as the university's organization, has built this thing up so they're in a position to be a power five conference school, especially mm -hmm. with USC and UCLA taking the money, which yep. we all would. Yeah. Um, but San Diego State deserves to be there. They put the time, they put the effort in, in terms of the national spotlight. But let's get to the game. Robert, I'm going to defer to you. So I left Will, I left Mike alone. You tell me. Are you really calling that foul in that moment with the nation watching? What say you? That's a foul. It's a foul. I mean, that's that's it. That play is a foul. Okay, and it's it's always and and I I, I can only take small doses of of Twitter. You know, everybody losing their minds because they're like. Oh, they let them beat each other up the whole game. And then they call that. And it's like. Basketball has a lot of contact. There's a lot of contact in basketball. OK. Contact in and of itself is not illegal. A lot of times the contact that you have on these plays that go to the basket and you have bodies all over the floor. It's not illegal contact. That play where the guy dribbles by the defender and the defender puts his hand in his hip and extends his arm, that's a foul. Uh, and and, and I, 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 I got to tell you, Robert's 100% correct. Coach Adams would have lost his mind if he had called it. And then after the game, I'd have seen Robert said, yeah, you know, you're right. But I got fans that I've got to do this show for. So right. well, <laughs> but here's, here's, here's the other, here's the other piece of that. Okay. Cause I, I, I understand, 
You know, you, you hear all the time, oh, you got to let the players decide the game. You can't call that foul. And it's like the players did decide the game. That guy got beat. He decided to extend his arm into his back instead of letting him go by. You know, the players, it, they shot to, um, Creighton was two of 17 from three, two of 17. They decided the game. They I decided the game. All right. So, Will, as a former player of mine, we actually used to bring in officials in the preseason to know what we can do, what we can't do. So tell me from either your player perspective or fanboy who may have had uh, strictly for entertainment purposes only, uh, maybe a little something online. What did you think about that play now that Robert's already told us what's supposed to happen? Now we could be fans after being educated. <laughs> what do you think, sir? As a <laughs> as an athlete, I you know it, it, Robert is correct. It, it, it's one of them it's things where it's 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 it. You're more upset that you got caught, and that you you know you were caught flat footed, and he got beat, and that's what you're really upset about. It like you really didn't get a chance to say I'm gonna do it. Now, uh, on the fan side, you know, I, I'm kind of a way I'm like we're we love these Hollywood endings like we love these like grandeurs and last minute shots. And, oh, you made it. I can't believe it. that we, we eat it up. That's what we did. And anytime it's not that way, everyone just complains. Oh, well, it was a terrible call. It was a terrible this it was a terrible that it's like, yeah, dude. But if you think about it. Those those moments only happen that make them rare because they're rare. They can't happen all the time, you know, and most of the time there is a penalty. You know, there's a P.I., there's a holding things that ruin games. And you're like, yo, like th that's the professionality of it, where you have to be like Robert said, you have to be a professional, you know, and, and sometimes uh, it costs you. So but but man, look, it was Man, look. <laughs> it was a foul. He, 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 he fouled him. He fouled him. It's, it's a foul. All right. So, Mike, my social studies teacher, how would you have adjudicated that? What do you think? Because you're my fan. You're my regular cat. What did you think, Mike? Because Robert already told us the truth, and that's why we started with him, fan, so you can actually yeah. know what happened. But now we could be fan people. <laughs> when you watch the replay, he instead of just leaving the hand there, he clearly follows through. So it's foul. Now, that was Maryland. I would have felt differently, but I think it's actually because I couldn't care less who won. I saw that and said that's a foul. If it was Maryland. I would have. I wouldn't have felt that way. Oh gosh. And okay. Called at the end of the Super Bowl is a good call. All right. So now we're going to move on from that. And uh, again, Pac-12, you guys are blowing it. So good luck, and uh, we hope you're still a conference in three years. All right. So UConn. Fellas, UConn has been killing. Okay, they've won all four of their postseason games in the big dance by 15 points or more. Um, gotta love Jordan Hawkins. And I gotta tell this story. Uh now again, I've never worked with Jordan Hawkins. I was at Gaithersburg with him, big fan, but you know, there was a uh first time I saw him was in an open gym or something, and I, I just saw one of my former staff members at Gaithersburg. Uh, just saw him uh, a couple of days ago and it was, you know, good to catch up. And he and I were just joking about the first time I saw him. And they also had another player there who's also a division one player, really good player. And they said, who do you like? And I said, I like that kid. That was Jordan. Yeah. He's like a sophomore or something like that. And he said, why do you like him? I said, he's got a skill that I could use right now. He can stroke it. He can hit a shot. And, you know, anytime you can just put somebody in and they can kind of figure it out. He actually reminded me of David Brewster. And when David was a sophomore and he played for me, he didn't have to do a lot. So when he was open, he hit it. Thanks. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Tip your waitress. And then he grew and developed and he transferred to the Matha, got more and more seasoning. And now this cat's a pro. And it's good to see because he was a good kid from the neighborhood, good family, all of that. So we're rooting for him. And UConn's playing extremely well. Uh, Dan Hurley is a basketball lifer. Uh, Bob Hurley, I've sat in many a clinic with him learning uh, about basketball. Again, a coach's coach. And, of course, Bobby Hurley, we all – uh, he's a contemporary age-wise of mine, so we liked UNLV, and it broke our heart when those 
beat him. <laughs> so, Robert, I'm going to start with you this time. What are you thinking about UConn? I, I think they, if they're not the favorite, they certainly should be. I, I mean, they just, they have played better than everybody else over the past, over the tournament. And they are hitting on all cylinders. They have size. Uh, I mean, they're just, they're, they're really good. And um, I, I don't think any of these, I mean, physically, I don't know if any of these teams are going to be able to match up with them. You know, and and that's and that's really uh, what happened with Gonzaga. I mean, I I didn't like Gonzaga all year, and they they got in there they got in there against UConn, and I mean they were they were physically overmatched. Yeah. And when and when the the officials properly decided they were going to call travels on Drew Timmy, you know that was kind of the 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 end of of that because the game before. You know, he got he got away with with a few shuffles and that they weren't going to let him do that last <laughs> night. And, you know, that that uh, that kind of that kind of set the tone. UConn's okay. really good, man. They are really good. Mike, what do you think about UConn? So I just had when you were telling that story about Gaithersburg, I just was when you came to my school, and we watched the game. Was he in that game? There were two players at Gatesburg that you were like pointing out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We did watch a game together. That was yes, at your spot. And yes. you were showing me, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he, got, he got a lot better. Because <laughs> he, he was good. He wasn't like, oh, he's gonna be playing in the final four good. Wow, good for him. Um, apparently Turgeon didn't even try to recruit him. <laughs> gonna try. I'm gonna put my hands in the air on that one. So like like I said in the in the first uh the very first uh NCAA preview, there's gonna be a Maryland player that someone from Maryland in the final four is good because there always are. And uh you say that. You did wow, it's say almost that. like you should just recruit this area and do well. Um <laughs> stores is a terrible, terrible place, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing that they are able to always be good. Slaying, I've been there. It is, there's nothing to do. And they continue to, the, the, they go, their conference disappears. They find a way out of it. It's like, like a, like a, a roach surviving a nuclear storm and they're, they're fine. And they just keep winning every like decade. They're just still here. It's impressive. Cause again, I've been to stores. It's impressive. That they Robert, can, Robert, try having a department meeting with this guy there. Okay. <laughs> I, I love it. Well, what do you think about UConn as our Big East aficionado? Oh, you know it, man. Big East has what? I think nine Final Four appearances. I think they have third behind like ACC and the Big Ten and both have football teams. So I love it. I love it. You know, I love it. It keeps us relevant. It keeps people excited about Northeast basketball, you know, um, it, and it's good. You know, when I remember because when I was playing basketball, uh, 2004, 2006 and so on, UConn was good. You, you know, UConn was a team. I'm watching. I'm like, oh, Rudy Gay and all the other cats. And I'm like, I, I, I remember that. You know, I remember Fowler beating them in person. You remember? I, I remember that. So it was it was, it, you know, it was always a team that that you had to beat. So uh, it's a good to have representation. And uh, let's go Big East. Well, I will say shout out to UConn's administration for admitting that they're wrong. That rarely happens, and Robert can speak to this. They tried to be a football school when they had no business trying to be a football school. They moved to the American Conference, played a whole lot of teams that didn't draw any interest, and they finally said, you know what? We're a basketball school. Our football team is going to be independent. If you win five or six games and go to a bowl, that's good enough for us, and we're going to go be basketball again and look at uh, the, the benefits of that. So we're going to move on from UConn. We're going to make a quick pit stop at Gonzaga, just a quick pit stop, because, folks, technically Gonzaga legend Drew Timmy has one year of eligibility left if he wants to use it. So, Robert. Yes or no, as we briefly stop there, should Drew Timmy come back or say, look, man, you're 27 years old. You're not Stetson Bennett from Georgia. It's time to go do something else. Should he come back or not? I really don't know why he wouldn't. I mean, I mean, let, let, cause let, let's, has he shown, 
has he shown the shooting range to be able to make shots in the NBA as a big 35 years old, man. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> his knees seem okay somebody could use us they could use him on a, on a, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna keep him around just because but 22 <laughs> 22 all right mike should he come back depends if he could make more money in nil or wherever else he would go because he's he gonna make more him. money in spokane and he's gonna make it a league then then stay it's, it's uh, easy answer He's 22, though, Will. I'll be all right, Mike. Is yeah. okay. Will, should he come back or uh, should he get get out of there, man? Man, stay. You know, <laughs> stay. I mean, why not? Be in college another year and you're like a really an adult, but you don't really have the responsibility of being an adult. <laughs> Like that's, that's perfect, man. That was, you know, especially there's no pressure from him. You know, you can tell he doesn't have like family or they need money and they're like, Oh, you have to go to the draft. You have to go to the draft, be a kid, man. Enjoy what you want to do, man. If you want to stay in college, stay in college. If you want to pursue other things, do it. I like that. He has the option to do it. Go make your money. And you, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So before we talk about Miami to close the segment, uh, Hey, Texas, uh, I don't think you're going to give Roddy Terry the job. I think you're going to say, again, this is Dr. Adams editorial. Hey, you did it with somebody else's players. Everything was set up for you. This is really Chris Beard's team. This is not yours. You drove the car and you were up and then you drove the car off the road. That's what my, you know, that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. So although he's done enough to get the job, and I hope he gets the job. I just think that even if they give him the job three years later, they're going to get him out. Uh, but will, should he get the job? Yes or no? Or will he get the job? Whichever way you want to go. No, 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 no. I think, you know, I think he should, he should, he should go ahead and leave out, cash him out what he can, you know, based from what Texas is going to do. And now he's still going to be very sought. You know what I'm saying? He can still go and take a year off if he wants to do, you know, do the family thing. I don't really know what he is personally, like things like that. But, you know, people are going to people are going to want you. People are going to want you. You know, he could probably make a lot more. He may make slight. He'll make less, not even slight. He'll make less than he would at Texas. But he would have a lot more security, you know, if you're going to a less smaller school because, you know, all eyes on me, especially Texas. So, uh, you know, I think either way, I think he's he won. I mean, whether he you know gets let go or he kept, I mean, he he won the situation. So, congratulations, sir. All right, Mike King, what do you think, sir? Um, they sh- should keep him. I don't know if they will, but I'd rather get the give me the big money at Texas, and someone else will still want me after they get if they get rid of me. Give me give me the big money. I'll take big money now. They'll pay if they get rid of me. They'll have to pay me for five years of whatever amount of money they're paying me, and I'll get another job and be good to go. I'll be on TV, whatever. They always follow the money. Or as we like to say on the show, GTB get the bag. Robert, you are in the hot of Texas, baby. What do you think they should do, He's, or then what will they do? I, 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 I think they should give him the job. I don't think they will. I, I think. I think that Texas AD is all about names and he's not a name. That being said, I don't know who he thinks he's going to get. If they give Rodney Terry the opportunity, take the money, baby. Get paid. Get paid. All right. Because those opportunities don't come very often. So you got to take them when you get them. All right, finally, I left this one for last because that's family to us, man. Salute to Coach Laranega, Bill Courtney, all of the cats at Miami. My wife and I had a chance to visit, uh, and, and as always, they rolled out the carpet for us. And 17 years ago of the day of this taping, I'm sitting uh, at whatever they call the – Capital One Arena, whenever watching Follerin's team beat UConn uh, off a step back against a guy who won uh, Player of the Year, and still kind of salty about that. But Jake told me what really happened. Um, so again, we want Miami to do well. But Mike, talk to me about NIL, man. <laughs> well, it helps, <laughs> and it also. Uh, uh, I'm conflicted because players get paid. 
but it just it's just something that's not you gotta be a better way because now it's like if you don't give me money i'm leaving and it's it's, it's college sports there's got to be a better i don't know there's got to be something better out there but also, Maryland beat Miami so bad this year. Well, why couldn't we get a better bracket? <laughs> All right. Old so Will, not the right fit. Will Cotton, my favorite capitalist. What are you thinking about Miami and NIL? That's a uh, $500,000 backcourt or something like that. What it, do you man, think? Man, look, they opened up the, the floodwaters, you know what I'm saying? And that's what they get. That's what they get. You know, all the years they spent, they were like, we're not getting anybody, nobody, no money, no, but nobody getting money. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, everybody can get it. It's like, you you have to put some regulation in it so that this doesn't get crazy because it's going to get even crazier. I mean, guardrails is is the phrase, Will. It's guardrails. You got to have guard. We went zero to 60 in one second. Oh yeah. It's going to get ridiculous. I mean, it's, and, and it's going to, everything is going to trickle down. High school, it's going to get ridiculous. I mean, these kids are going to get some kind of NIL. Um, uh, the state of Maryland has allowed NIL, sir. For yeah, high school you athlete. know, it's it's going to it's going to get it's going to get big. So I think right now, as much as they're probably going to get a lot of fight back on it or push back on it, put some policy in, put some regulation in, put some cap on it because it's it's going to it's going to cap. Uh, there has yeah. to be Mike. No. You teach him about social studies. You go <laughs> teach him. <laughs> there has to be no. There has to be. There has to be some sort of salary cap or something, because now when you talk about money, there's going to be something that's going to be illegal. That's going to have eventually. There's going to be so much money that you can't cross the morality. It's gonna. It's gonna, it's going to cross over and it's going to be ugly. I think there has to be regulation right now and try to wrangle it because it is going to get ridiculous. Why? NIL has ruined the movie Blue Chips because anyone <laughs> yeah. that movie it's, it's not, it's not even like, relevant. It's not well, relevant at all. What's the issue? They bought a house. Yeah, <laughs> they got a job. That's, that's what you're it. supposed to do. That's this, it. This movie? $10, it's like an dollars. universe. <laughs> Robert, please bring some levity as we close this segment, sir. All right. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the thing that these guys are right. I mean, it's, it, it's already chaos. It's going to be even more chaos. And, but let's be honest, is it not consistent with so many other walks of life right now? Post COVID. Yeah. There's, just chaos, there's chaos everywhere. This is just another place. And I, I think I've said this before, if the NCAA had had any, forward thinking people on board they would have said hmm maybe we should get in front of this but they decided not to and this is what we have and um i i think that that one thing that uh you know it, it's going to be really interesting to see going forward the t- i think the teams that are going to be the most successful are going to be the teams that not only get NIL money, but they're also the teams that manage to keep their core together. FAU. I mean, like F- <laughs> FAU, San Diego State, all those dudes at San Diego. And, and we, I, I didn't, I have to add this because we've been talking about this the whole tournament. San Diego State's got some dudes, man. <laughs> They've got some men. And but th- they've been together. They've been together. It's been the same team. And they probably got, they probably got men bills too. <laughs> <laughs> those, hey, those are some big dudes, man. Yeah. And they get they get after it. They and I mean they the the game today and and I know Creighton is not an original Big East team, but that was a very Big East ish game. Mm-hmm. It was physical. It was tough. And they got after it. And San Diego State is good with that. The only way San Diego State wins two games is if they can keep their if they can keep those games in the fifties like they did today. If well, they're they're, uh, they're what the fifth defensive efficiency rated team all year, so they're so, that's what they do. So that is what they do, and that's yeah. that's how they get a chance to win. But the the team, I think that going, I think people will start to figure out. Look. We get a little bit of money. We keep some guys together. We're going to have some success. Yeah. All right. So with that, fans, in segment two, 
we're going to give this same type of breakdown to the women's tournament. And although the uh, games will happen on Monday for some of them, I think we know enough that uh, we can make some, some good calls on that. We'll be right back after this break. Why should student athletes use the CKA SAVE Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision-making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Projects close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at CKA at CKASaveProject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two of our NCAA Final Four preview. We're going to talk about the women's game and the women's tournament. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I think it's time for a change of the guard. The Odd Coaches have followed the women's game all year. And one of the things that we've said is that women's basketball this year is top heavy, but it's a changing of the guard. So first of all, we have to... Uh, uh, praise Caesar. Uh, hey, you comments so It's been an incredible run. But now your days of total dominance are, as Hammer once said in the 90s, done, finish, gone, kaput. In other words, you got the hook, Hank Yank, push to the side because everybody else is good. And as Will said in segment one, why do I have to go to stores, Connecticut? Why do I have to go to Yukon? Mike said it's a terrible city when I can be on TV in South Beach. I could be on TV in South Carolina. I could be on TV at other places. Uh, I do not think Gino has handled the transition well. And although they did have some injuries, um, man, it's over. Will, am I being too harsh on UConn? Tell me as the Big East person. No, no. I mean, you know, they had a great run, and they have nothing to be mad about. I mean, they were antiquated in terms of how they want to recruit and how they run and run their run their program. And, you know, they're still very respective. You know what I'm saying? They're not like it's like they're – They're going to be like the intercontinental champ now. They're, they're yeah, done yeah, chasing yeah, the title. Exactly. They're the secondary folks now. Exactly. Sorry, random wrestling reference. No, nah, you're playing. You're playing at nine. Th- you're playing at nine o'clock, not ten p.m. Though you know what I'm saying. You don't play the last giant. Yes. You know, so. you're the semi main event. Now. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, the, hopefully, hopefully, it gives them an opportunity to look at themselves, look at their reflection, and say, you know, who do we want to be? You know, we want to. You want to try in this old archaic way, or do we want to try something new? with this whole new NIL thing and how we can brand and change things and do other teams that, you know, we know we can do. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Next couple of five, seven, seven, like seven or 10 years, just going to see about UConn, what they're going to become. I mean, I don't know. Gino is probably going to leave. He's getting, you know, a little older. So they got to kind of think about where they're going to move uh, sooner than sooner than later, you know? Yeah. There's a side door coming up here. Robert, what do you think while Mike fixes screen? <laughs> so, I mean, they they have obviously they've had a ton of success doing what they do. And part of part of what they do and part of their success is just the culture that's been built there. And this is obviously by far the biggest challenge they've had to that culture in terms of, you know, how how is this going to. Is the culture strong enough to counteract this new this new NIL deal. And right at the moment, no, it's not. Can they figure that out? I don't know. How long, I mean, because the question really is, you know, how long does Gino Ariema want to stay? Yeah, and a lot of the male legends have (laughs) exit stage left. 
Right. And yes, they did have injuries. We're not going to say they did not. Oh okay. yeah. It's and, not an and, issue. And, but, and, and we're, yeah. we're, we're burying this, we're burying this program for not going to the final four or making the elite eight. And we're not burying them. This is not right. a, a bum conversation, but again, in terms of national domination as they've done, right, man, they're the best in the big East. And right. I watch Big Ten basketball this year on the women's side. You weren't beating them. <laughs> they had five or six squads that could go. And yep. then you've got the SEC. And South Carolina's not going to be – you're going to win when you can, but now you're just in the mix. And every so yep. years you, you'll get a nice run in, but I kind of well, think it's done. He's, he's 69 years old. How much longer do you want to do this? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I will. <laughs> Mike, what do you think, man, about UConn? Am I being too harsh or or, or what, sir? I'd say a little too harsh. Okay. I mean, Tennessee was UConn before UConn. They yes. went away. You look. I just looked up, like, next year's recruiting class, top 100, didn't see any – like, Tennessee's not anywhere near the top in terms of the best players. So, yeah, that program just kind of vanished. UConn, they got two top 15 players for next year. But uh, there's other schools that have two top 15 players, and that's the difference. It used to be – so I'll give you a different wrestling thing. I'm not going to say Intercontinental because they're still in it for the, for the main title. They're just in the Royal Rumble. They're one of the names <laughs> that you've heard of. They're one of the names that could actually win. You expect them to be one of those final six. They're not the guy that runs out, does a little – and they just throw him right out and everyone oh, laughs. They're not that. I love this dude. Yes. Okay. I can live with that. And that's putting it in Keith language. So let's talk about the teams that actually are still playing as I've got one game on behind me. I'm sure you might be peeking at it. Ohio State, Big Ten basketball was good all year. And the Big Ten as a conference delivered on its promise that they've got a bunch of heavyweights. And they did something that no other team has done since Stanford. They kept UConn from the Elite Eight. So instead of overly talking about UConn, just want to send my love to Ohio State. So Ohio State, kudos to you for winning the game. And now, Mike, we get to talk about Maryland. So Brenda Freeze had a tough year last year. And Coach Franchise uh, and the Freeze family go back. I go back a long time with Brenda Freeze coach Mark Thomas, who actually covered me um, when, when I was a high school coach wonderful family and her pops passed last year they were very close and then she lost uh a lot of players four starters mike uh entered the transfer portal um she added nine players to her roster including five transfers so maryland has adapted and then you got to live now now you got to build and grow you got to hear this. You got all these new parts and you're going to lose some. And they played South Carolina this year and they got drubbed at home, but you're still living and learning. And the team that South Carolina is going to play on Monday and this comes out on Thursday is not the same team you played in November, December or whatever. And kudos to Dawn Staley for taking these type of games on the road. That just shows you what kind of baller she is. So with that said, Mike, what are you thinking about Maryland's chances? Can so, they do this thing? Best player didn't play in that game. Now, I don't know if that makes a difference in a 40-point loss, but, I mean, Don, Don, she's the team, right? So, like, there's, good, there's a lot of good players. She's, she's the one who makes it go. Um, you know, it'd be, it would be a surprise. South, South Carolina's the team um, that we all expected to win the whole thing. Brent, Brenda has there's she has some magic in her. She she they've had that they had a run. They've had some other good runs. Um, no one seems to do better with line changes. Like she's this isn't the first time four people have transferred and then she's got a whole new team and expectations are down and they end up kind of doing exactly what you think what you uh, think they would have done if people didn't leave. So um, I'd say a small chance, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bet against Brenda. All right, so we're going to hold South Carolina to the end. Uh, and I want to talk about Virginia Tech. Shout out to Stacy Smith, uh, Virginia Tech alum, good friend. And she told me early on that Virginia Tech women's team is somebody to watch. So she was the first person over the summer to uh, catch me and say, hey, I want you to hear 
you know, I want to hear a little bit about Virginia Tech. So they're going to face Ohio State on Monday. Uh, I have Virginia Tech in my final four. They've got the two-time player of the year and Elizabeth Kitley. Um, you know, they, they've got ball players. okay? They got Georgia, uh, Amore. I think Virginia Tech's going to do something good, man. So I'm expecting to see them in the final four. Um, but, fellas, uh, Robert, I want to get to you. I don't know if you watched LSU play. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Kim Mulkey, and it's not because she didn't coach. It's because I didn't think she advocated for her player in a way that I would have. So that's my hang up. She was, she's a wonderful coach. She's won games. She's done all of this. This is her second year at LSU. Well, Robert, what was the thing that she was wearing? I have to ask that because the internet was buzzing. And I'm like watching the game and, and I'm seeing all these Ric Flair references. So I'm like, what, what, what? And whenever I see Ric Flair trending, I get nervous. Okay. I'm like, Oh my God, what happened? And then she had the outfit on and I'm sorry, ladies, I'm talking about outfit, but I called my wife up and my wife said, that's just who she's wearing it. It's not wearing her, but I'm still like, what is this? So Robert, did you see it? And uh, what did you think about it? And I'm only talking about it because it, that's what was trending. Not the game score, not anything that had to do with basketball. It was that outfit and putting pictures of her next to Ric Flair. The internet's mean and it's undefeated. What do you Rick, think? Ric Flair would have told Kim Mulkey, girl, don't, don't wear that. <laughs> My wife had no problem with it. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. And and I agree with you. I'm I'm not a fan. <laughs> of Miss Mulkey, and we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it at that. All right. So, Will, I'm gonna roll over now and talk about Miami and some NIL, baby. Miami is in the Elite Eight. The men there are in the Elite Eight. The women are in the Elite Eight, and uh, a lot of NIL. I didn't even know the Twins could play that well. I still don't think they can play that well, but man, have they drawn a lot of attention? What are you thinking about Miami's chances uh, as we're watching them play LSU now? And it's a pretty close contest. Miami had already won. They've already they, won. They have already won. They are a so now people are going to look at them as like the NIL capital of places to go. I mean, if you think about it, South Beach, I mean, it's always warm. You're always going to have a lot of people, influencers. Um, you have a lot of people in social media, Instagram, that uh, superstars and not superstars, but, you know, celebrities on there like that. And there's just an opportunity to get more money, you know, and you win on top of that, you win. So, I mean, you know, it's it's always it's it's a town where if you got some money, you can go play, you know, and they're going to make a good little bit. Uh, they're going to make a lot of money. Um, it, it, I mean, it's good. I mean, it's uh, again, again, they're playing within the rules that they've been given, which mean there are no rules. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, do what you got to do, man. If at, at the most, win. You know, shoot, win. I mean, shoot. If you're gonna pay people to come here, yeah, at least win. You, you say know? it like it's a bad thing. With I mean, uh, but, but if you're saying, gonna like, pay people, you <laughs> best well win. But I mean, but if you think about all these like NCAA like football teams like Oklahoma, and it's like we're paying million per guy over here, million dollar over here, and they don't really like. You know, but here in Miami, it's like, look, hey, we got over basketball, you know, and uh, uh, football was not too bad this year. I mean, I, no, they were bad. Um, they were bad. They were very bad. But the basketball is like, yo, come here, come through, man. We got money. We're, we're a sexy uh, city. We're a sexy uni university. You know, you get money there. Uh, you know, man, I, you know, good for them, man. Good for them. Good for them. Good for them. Okay. So, so Mike, I want to talk to you about Louisville because – I don't know the whole beef with the Maryland Louisville rivalry in terms of the two coaches. Louisville tends to win more than it loses and uh, say what you want, but Jeff Waltz is an outstanding coach. Uh, do you know anything about that background and do you know anything about him and, and Louisville basketball? I uh, don't know about the Louisville Maryland uh any issues there for uh, women's basketball, but I do know I was good. So I think I was going to take them. All right. So that transitions us to talk to Iowa and uh, Robert, I think I might have to eat some crow because Caitlin Clark 
took that thing up to another level as she hit the moment and elevated. Uh, so uh, maybe Iowa will make the Final Four. What do you think, Robert? Hey, K- Caitlin Clark is – she is a baller. That's it. She's a baller. And when she walks on the floor, she's open. <laughs> and she's in, and she's she's in range, good. and it's going up. You know, and yeah, she, I mean, she has triple doubles often, but if it, if it comes down to, if it comes down to it, she's going to have the ball in her hands and it's going up. All right. So now we're going to go back and circle back to South Carolina. And this is an opportunity for history. And what I mean by that is you've got seniors who've been in the program. You've been through the COVID year. You've got a coach who has a chance to be, you know, that third national title puts you in a different category. Um, She's a spokesperson for an industry. She's taken that baton for women's athletics and has been on the forefront um, in terms of Dawn Staley, uh, Aaliyah Boston. Everything's lining up um, for it to be a coronation of Dawn Staley, because none of this is sustainable in terms of just this eliteness. So you have to take advantage of your windows. And uh, with everybody being a senior, I don't know who they've got coming in next year, but man, what a way to cap this. So, Will, uh, you've actually peaked at, at, at women's basketball in part because of Dawn Staley. Any thoughts you have about South Carolina's pursuit of ridiculous history? Man, I I don't think it gets enough love. <clears throat> you know, I think don't people don't get enough love. I don't think people even know her name. I mean, she should be a big name. I mean, she should be up there. I mean, she should be up there. NBA uh, uh, team should be hitting, you know, may not uh, hit her up like, hey, you know, let's have a conversation. Let's talk, you know, other uh, big programs in the in the men's in the men's game. Call her up. See what she's doing. She know what she's doing. She she can she she can connect with the with the kids. She, they can connect. They know how to play. And you know her drip is crazy. She always got the like the nice kicks, man. She got the jacket on. She's she's stupid fresh. She she seems like she's very a like she's a very likable person. You know, a very real down to you know down to kind of person. And um, I was really hoping you know uh, Georgetown or somebody gave a you know took a chance and were like, hey, you know, Temple's open. Will Temple's open, and she's from Philly. I hope I hope somebody d- d- grabs her up. I, I think hope. she's better than the Temple job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why, why in the world would Dawn State – and, yes, she played at Temple, and I know she's from – No, she went to – she's from Philly, played at UVA. We're local. That's, We're that's right. Okay, she, but she's from Philly. Why in the world would she leave yeah. that? Well, sold depends, out arena. I mean, it just depends all on the check. facilities and everything else so she can go to – a bad program in a mediocre conference. I mean, and I'm not saying that somebody shouldn't have conversations with Don Staley about, you know, coming and coaching men. Cause I guarantee you, she could do it. But, but temple. No, no, okay, but you, you just said, oh. you just said, go and get paid. Because you know, one but day, temple you ain't gonna pay. one day you are. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Be, because because I, I mean, and if South Carolina is smart, there they will say, they will go to Don Staley and they will say, we will see whatever anybody offers you and raise them X percent. So if you decide to leave us, it's not about the money. It's about right. whatever else. But it ain't going to be about the money. So South Carolina um, wasn't a that good of program before she got there. I'm looking nope. at 16 and 16, 18, 15, 17, 12, 8, 21, 10 and 18. That was the five years before she took over. So I think she wherever she goes, it's going to be a good program. So <laughs> go where the money is. Or get to the NBA. You know, <laughs> get hey, why not? Why not? She could she could definitely be on the bench. She could definitely be on the bench. Why not? All right. So with that, fans, when we get back, we're going to talk about the ACC and some of the things their commissioner said 
and then we are going to make our predictions for who wins the national championship. And I'm sure they'll be as wrong as our brackets. We'll be right back on the I Coaches Podcast. <laughs> the high school and college academic and athletic landscape is changing. The growing number of college transfers, as well as student athletes being able to profit off the use of their name, image, and likeness has given student athletes the freedom and power to make life-changing decisions. That is why it is important for student athletes to be properly informed throughout the decision-making process. The difference between success and failure is often measured not by yards, but by inches, and even the most successful coaches and players use outside independent consultants to help improve their decision-making, which improves their results. That is what the CKA Save Project would like to do for student athletes across the country, improve their academic and athletic results. Our academic and athletic consulting services assist student athletes with the college decision-making process. The CKA team of former high school and college coaches can provide student athletes an independent assessment of their academic and athletic skills to assist student athletes in their college decision-making process. Let the CKA team evaluate your academic and athletic ability to assist you in finding the right fit for your academic and athletic career. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free virtual consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at ckasaveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment three. We're going to start off with something my partner, Coach Franchise, hates talking about. And that's all kinds of things outside of just beating people on the court. So, fellas, does the ACC have a point? ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips told ESPN that he will meet with his league's men's basketball coaches and athletic directors as soon as the season ends to discuss ways to be more proactive and aggressive in changing the narrative surrounding the conference. The ACC, the ACC only got five bids this year and the commissioner thought that Clemson should have been in the tournament and North Carolina should have been in the tournament. So let's talk about net rankings because I love the net rankings. I'm, I'm in the minority. Okay. Phillips says he believes the men's basketball selection committee has become too reliant on the net rankings to evaluate teams. And my partner would agree with them rather than just evaluating teams. We're paying too much attention to the net, and I'm not, I'm just not there on that. So my response to anybody about the net is that, hey, they told you what the rules were beforehand, and you still scheduled those bums. And then you're going to lose to them, and you're still mad at us. I don't want to hear about it. So Jeff Capel talked about a lack of respect in the ACC uh, because Pitt was one of the five teams that made it into the tournament, but they were part of the first four. And then Phillips started talking about the transfer portal and how it's affected rosters in a way that five years ago it didn't have because you've got all of these transfers and, and it's hard to get in the rhythm in early non-conference games. Well, then don't schedule them. Um, so anyway, this is a new day of college basketball. A lot of yada, yada, yada on my part. So, Mike King, my social studies person, what do you think about what the ACC commissioner said? Agree? Disagree? What say you, sir? You know they're going to look at the the tiers, and you want to have tier one wins, and you don't want to have tier three and four losses. Everybody knows that. So, schedule people that are pretty good, but not fantastic and not terrible, and beat them. That's the Syracuse you, model. <laughs> and it, if you do, you're going to get into the tournament. It's, it's, it's not hard. Like you said, they tell you what they're looking for, and then you're complaining that you didn't do what they were looking for. That's, this is the, here's the answer to the test. And then the student goes, well, how come you didn't tell me it was on the test? I told you it was on the test. It's called Take a it review. Me. Here's the packet. Let's study it. Like, that's, it, I, I hate the AC anyway. They have the, they can eat their uh, their the bojangles and they can cry about not making the tournament and make the, make Maryland's uh, rival pit. Eh, I'm done with them. I, I hate everything that, everything he says, regardless if he was right. I'd hate it if he's wrong. Will save me because he mentioned bojangles. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I mean, they're probably upset they're losing money. I mean, remember ACC Network used to be popping, used to be Maryland, used to have all the uh, you know all the other teams playing on there. Now it's like nobody really watching it anymore. Um, I think you know the ACC is like, yo, like we have some 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 really good teams, but they don't. You know what I'm saying? They got rid of their all their basketball. You know, uh, I mean, I guess Duke is still there, and they have North Carolina. That's the only thing they can they can hold on to. But I mean, they had a lot of good amount of fans in Maryland. I mean, they do football, they do basketball. You know, women's too for basketball. So that's like a huge amount of of view of viewership. I mean, Wake just Forest is not drawing flies. I went to Maryland Wake Forest, and there was nothing there. Ohio State comes to town; it's sold out. Yeah. I don't understand why there was even a question about leaving the ACC. <laughs> Robert, you are my leader's leader. What do you think about what the ACC commissioner said? You're going to bring levity to this conversation. So the ACC doesn't, they, they don't have, I mean, it, it's not like a football problem. It's not a, it's not a, even a basketball problem. It's a, Louisville, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech being really bad problem. Boston College being really bad problem. That's what it is. When the bottom of your league is bad, it's going to kill the top of your league. And, and the conference itself wasn't very good this year anyway. I think that's more of an anomaly than anything else. Um, but the days of them being a the ACC being, you know, the best conference or talked about as one of the best conferences. I, I don't see those days returning because what the ACC has done, unlike the Big East, the Big East has decided this is who we are. This is what we're going to be when we grow up. And right now you have the ACC and also the Pac-12, they don't know what they're going to do and they no. can't decide what they're going to do. It used if to be superstars. If, if you want to make this, if, if you want to make this about your, your basket, make getting eight teams in the NCAA tournament, then say, you know what? We're going to be a basketball tournament. We're still going to have, I mean, obviously you still have football and all that, but no, you have Clemson and maybe Florida state and Miami in the next couple of years. Yeah, uh, as much as I love North Carolina, nobody's really watching that. Yeah. Even like but, Virginia Tech, like they. But nobody make, watches make your anymore. decisions. Make your decisions based on basketball and what's best for your basketball. That's it. Because that's what the Big East did. They got out of the football business totally and said, "Good luck and Godspeed." Yeah, but the AC, ACC can't get out of the football business, so they'll lose the the other the schools at the bottom. They'll yeah. lose their Florida schools. They'll lose Clemson. And then, then they'll. Well, they may them. lose them anyway, based they on the contract. They're they might, lose but Clemson. They're going to lose Clemson in the Florida schools anyway. But I think the issue is Duke and UNC are always. They're always going to have their superstars. But Wake Forest used to have future NBA historic yeah, players, yeah. Chris Paul and Tim Duncan, and Maryland had Joe Smith and Len Bias and uh, Juan Dixon. There were different eras, and I'm there's others, but different eras of superstars. If Duke and UNC are the only ones, no one's going to, no one cares about the conference. Who cares about watching these other schools? You need, you need talent. talent. And we totally forgot about UVA in this whole conversation. And they just won national championship yeah, a few years ago. And we just, <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, UVA. Is the you don't know what you want to be. You don't know what you want to be. You won. You were like, yeah, oh, we won. Oh. I don't know what to do with my hands. Like they don't yeah. like. <laughs> and NC State, man, they got a, they they got people down there. They got alum, and they don't do nothing with it. Done. NC State uh, would have superstars. They'd all have superstars. Like uh, throughout the conference, there were superstars everywhere. Yeah. yeah. All right, fellas, it is time. So when I get to you, you're going to tell me who's winning the men's national championship game. And the women's national championship game. And I'm starting with my captain. Will, who's winning the men's? Who's winning the women? The men, I'm going to give it to UConn. And the women, I'm going to South Carolina. Okay. Robert, who we got? Men's and women. I I, I got UConn. I got to agree with. They're, they're playing the best right now. They have looked the best. Uh, women's. 
I, I appreciate all the love that you all have for your 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 compadre Brenda Freeze there, you know, living in the neighborhood. Uh, but let me just think about that for a second. No, South Carolina. Okay, Mike, give us something, man. You're gonna go sideways, aren't you? Uh, I'm gonna go sideways for the men's. Um, women's, I'm, I'm not because it's obvious South Carolina. But the men's, I'm gonna go San Diego State. They've got the easiest road to the final. UConn's got a tough game. They got a tough game to get there. So, I you know, if no one's gonna take Miami, at least I have a better chance of uh, having the second place. I'm, I'm going with them because again, defense. They can play defense against any of these teams. Effort. It's true. Oh, uh, 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 yes, yes. So, if I'm not mistaken, and please correct me, fellas, if I'm wrong, the first game on Saturday will is Florida Atlantic University against San Diego State University for the right to play for the national championship on Monday night at nine oh seven nine oh eight. Is is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And then in the nightcap, when you guys leave the house and say, Coach, we're going to a real party, it's going to be Miami versus UConn. So that is the national championship game. A lot of <laughs> and, and as much as I love Coach L, UConn is playing on a mission. And I can't see UConn losing to that. And then, wait for it, guys, UConn against San Diego State, because I think San Diego State can, can win. But I, Florida Atlantic can win, too. But their length and their toughness. So when you've got comparable talent, you go to the sidelines. Dusty May's doing a good job, but mm. – and the coach at uh, San Diego State's doing a good job. Been there forever, was there with Steve Fisher and all that. I just think UConn's talent is much better – and man, they're hitting shots. And yeah, so I'm going to go UConn and uh, I'm going South Carolina. Uh, but I'm hoping Virginia Tech makes it to the final. But I don't even know how that bracket works. But I'm hoping Virginia Tech makes it to the final so we can have a change in the guard and have some different names. But uh, wow, that is uh, that's going to be a, a very, very unwatched Monday game. Uh, <laughs> WrestleMania is on Saturday, so the Raw after WrestleMania. Sorry, fellas. I don't care who's playing. I'm watching the Raw after WrestleMania, hoping Randy Orton's coming back. Uh, any final thoughts, starting with Mike King? Any final thoughts about the tournament? Anything we should look for? Anything you want to close with, sir? The Women's Basketball Championship should be Maryland versus LSU, Angel Reese against Brenda Freeze. That's what people That's want to watch. That's good booking, baby. That's, That's good booking. Sells itself. <laughs> <laughs> Won't happen. Thank you. <laughs> Will, any final thoughts? Uh, I hope it becomes a good final four because that'll be two championships that the NCAA will be not having a good ending of that one again. Oh, oh yeah. That the football <laughs> game was what 60 to whatever? 60, yeah. like 66 7. And if this ends up bad or click, viewership, click, click. yeah, uh, they're gonna be uh, so upset. So. They don't like parody. They like yeah, parody on paper. Go. <laughs> <laughs> not in reality. Robert, anything before we close? Worst that worst thing that could happen for the NCAA is you know you have UConn and San Diego State or UConn and FAU and it's it's like the the UNLV Duke game back in 1991 <sighs> where UNLV is beating them by a thousand at halftime. That's good times. Head That's, by all. And 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 you know. Do I think that will happen? No. But could it really easily happen because of how everything else has gone this year? Oh, yeah. You betcha. <laughs> All right, fellas, this was fun. I appreciate it. Uh, so on behalf of my tag team partner, Coach Mike Francis, enjoying uh, an evening to himself, I am Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watch the I Coaches podcast, and we will see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. And I can't stay up that late anyway. See you next time. The I Coaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project 
is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at cka.saveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.